All right, it's me, Russell Brand. Look, I'm very happy to bring you this version of my podcast, Under the Skin, which you can get only on Num- on Luminary, a subscription podcast network. Don't panic when they said Numinary. That would be a good alternative name. Uh, it's a subscription podcast network of original shows you won't find anywhere else. My guest today is bloody good as well. Under the Skin's got amazing stuff on there. There's me with Eckhart Tolle. There's me with Ricky Gervais. There's me with Tony Robbins. There's a great bank of glorious episodes reaching right back into the annals, I said, annals of history. My guest today is the renowned spiritual teacher, Muji. For over 20 years, Muji has been guiding countless seekers worldwide in search of true happiness, peace, and freedom. It was a wonderful conversation. He taught me a lovely meditation technique, which I think you all enjoy. I can't remember where it is on the video. Just watch all of it. It's good. It's a brilliant conversation. Also, what I like about Muji, he has a sort of a lucid and easy way of helping you to recognize that you are already in a state of awareness and that you can unclutter yourself from the various sort of accoutrements of your own identity. For more conversations like this, and guests like this, join me on Luminary. Sign up and start listening with a seven day free trial at luminarypodcasts.com. Save up to 40% when you sign up for the annual plan. Not available in all markets, subject to local currency, terms apply. I sincerely urge you to sign up for Luminary. You recognize now the the way the world's going, subscription models is the future. Check out this episode with Muji, you'll love it. Muji, thank you for joining us for Under the Skin. It's a pleasure, man, thank you. I've wanted to speak to you for a long time. One of the things I enjoy very much about your meditations is the way that you make it very straightforward, that you say that we're already in a meditative state, that we're not more than just a vessel for thoughts and concepts and ideas. How did you evolve or develop this method of teaching? Um... I don't feel I developed anything at all. To be honest, I don't feel I developed anything. I'm I'm poor at that. Anything that (laughs) requires, I'm poor at that. So I'm not going to make that claim. It comes also, and I also share this very often, that as you, um, if you follow the pointings, they are very straightforward. I believe that, and have this impression that, uh, of course, that they are very simple, and they are simple. Whether my pointings are very simple. Uh, what seems to be difficult, what people find, is that the mind, their own personal noise come up, and some resistance come. So it's the struggle with the resistance that comes up in the mind that gives the impression that it's difficult to discover what I'm pointing to. So, But once, once uh, it begins to somehow percolate through, and we get a, a, a real valued sense a real experience of what the pointings are. Thereafter, you see a natural confidence emerge inside, and it keeps expanding little by little, sometimes quickly, unexpectedly. And uh, we find that uh, we don't need to bring in the personal mind or the background of the mind, because it doesn't really contribute anything here apart from a sense of being distracted and uh, and bringing back in the sense of personhood, which is a thing I say it's worth uh, um, transcending. You see, so m- to answer your question, uh, uh, as you come into that experiential recognition, you find that uh, a growing, a natural expansion is taking place, a, a kind of coming into. Uh, without the mind deliberately making any construct, it's just taking place. Uh, you, the growth is happening just like uh, the growth in the body happens, but I'm not growing myself, it just happens. So in the same way, this, this happens, that uh, we come to a deeper understanding, something comes more uh, natural for us. And it's wonderful to share this, because people are a little bit afraid that uh, they may have to learn a lot of things and they have so many things to overcome and it's going to take me a lot of time. And I said, oh, 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 no, don't. That's your mind speaking, actually. What I'm pointing to is already the reality uh, that you are. So don't worry. Just take one step at a time and you, you come there. You come there. I find it hard, uh, like even still, I've been meditating for a little while now, but I still find that, yes, I have... Uh, roaming thoughts I sometimes feel quite extreme things in meditation 
uh, like a, a violent thoughts, for example, or like and sometimes drift into uh, erotic thoughts. You know, things that are like that. All of these things are in the landscape of my mind, and I thought that was very interesting. What you just said that it's not something we need to engender or act upon. It's something that will. It's something that will happen. It's something that's already present. How do you characterize this? existing presence that is waiting to be realized what is it what do you see it as uh, okay first of all you know we use the word already that it's a, it's already an existing presence it's already existing by itself so therefore it's not something that we are going to create and i'm happy always to share that because there is a so the mind from the mind often comes uh, the sense that you have to develop this and Create or I said no 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 you are merely discovering this you see you're only discovering this and so like you mentioned now that um, sometimes all kind of random thoughts it I would say random because uh, they just fly up out of nowhere they come up inside the the mind space as you nicely put it uh, and I think where the where the trouble is felt for many people is that they feel they need to get rid of that, or that is a statement about the level of maturity that they are, or how good they are, or if you say you have violent thoughts may come, erotic thoughts may come, all kind of thoughts that are not desirable uh, may just flood the system, so to speak. And uh, I remind people, don't worry about that. Actually, the trouble uh, is not that these thoughts just come, but you identify with them uh, as though they are some indication or a reading of the value uh, of yourself. I said, no, 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 no. Um, don't think that somehow uh, some awakened being like Christ always have Christ thoughts or the Buddha always had Buddha thoughts, you know, and just poor us human beings, we have all these devilish thoughts. No, thoughts don't belong to anybody. Uh, they they come and if they get the, the the kind of reception that we often give them by identifying uh, ourselves personally, then uh, that is the that's opening the door to to them returning so to speak, and with increasing uh, uh, potency and uh, virility. You see, like this. No, if you what I advise is that, yes, let the thoughts come. Don't rush to put them or to stop them or to be distracted from them. How about if we just try, just allow them to just happen? Because before they appear, you didn't know they were going to come. Uh, you see, like that, they just simply come. And uh, how about just letting them come, but you remain as a, a sort of detached uh, witness to them. This is very important, you see, and perhaps uh, a thing that needs to be heard, that you can witness them without logging into them, so to speak, you know? Uh, you, you want to say something, no? That, yes, sir. That, that is perhaps the one of the most important and most commonly recurring tenets of the, can I say, spiritual attitude. This idea of disidentification, this idea of separation from the thoughts. Sometimes I think for people that are not familiar with the kind of language around the spiritual consciousness, say, the idea that you are not your thoughts seems um, an, an unusual one because I think that the, that is the sort of the nexus of identification. I'm Russell. I want these things. I'm from Essex. I support West Ham. These things happened. I take that. Okay, let's 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 back up a little bit then. For someone who would who would feel that way, uh, if it were in the moment and I was with them, I perhaps wouldn't just say you are not your thoughts because I I'm aware that at one time I believe myself that I'm my thoughts. You see, so I can well understand if someone feels like that. So I'm not going to try and convince them that they're not their, their thoughts. I'd rather say, are you open to a little exercise of just looking? And if you can say, look, the thoughts are coming up, and say, for people who, who say that they suffer their thoughts, it's often because they take them very personally. 
And uh, so, you know, I would say, okay, let the thoughts come, and whatever their their claims are, let them let them simply arise, okay? Uh, but uh, you just you are here, no? And you simply pay attention to their their coming. See if you can look without identifying with them. When I say without logging into them, meaning that see if it's possible. I know it is possible. Uh, uh, maybe in the beginning we feel no, 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 they're coming. Sometimes people may say no, no, they're coming. It's too, it's too loud. I can't. No, no, sorry, I can't. And then it's, what do you want to do? So like I feel like somehow I, I embrace them or something. I said no, 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 let them come. And as though uh, your lights are switched off, your lights of involvement are switched off. So you're only able to perceive, but not to log in or to subscribe to them for a moment. Just try it. And surprisingly, most people allow that space in themselves, and they begin to say, yeah, okay. And sometimes I even say, just say uh, where you are right now in the looking. They say, well, all these thoughts are coming. But um, I'm able somehow to not grab them. So very good, very good. Simply uh, stay like that. Doesn't matter how strong the thoughts are or how personal they are. Just let them run like you're watching a movie, okay? And uh, and uh, w- if you do this, that is already a great step because you will see that you're able to. Stay out of the traffic for a moment. No, that's if they are able to to do that. Soon they experience a kind of spaciousness. Like wow, I can actually do this. So I I would put that as an important uh, um, step. And gradually, instead of tackling the thoughts and try to change them or find some distraction from them, I said no. Let just let them swim up because you did not order them. You know. And uh, it's, uh, it's as though the thoughts are either auditioning for your attention or that they are thoughts that uh, you have given uh, uh, some amount of investment in them. They keep coming back, keep coming, almost as though they feed on your attention. If they don't get your attention or interest or identity, they somehow just collapse into a kind of oblivion. You know, They, they actually actually happens, you see. And so fresh are these exercises that you are experiencing immediate results to them, you see. So I'm happy that you stopped me there for a moment to say, okay, some people won't be familiar with that language that I'm not your, I'm not my thoughts or any such things like the mind doesn't exist. I'm not going to say that to anybody. Uh, I say that, that the world uh, and the mind does not exist is not a, it's not a, a great teaching. It's a great discovery, but it's not a good teaching. So I would not want to present someone, especially someone unfamiliar with this type of expression. I would not speak to them like that. I'm pretty sure about it. Muji, when I was uh, listening to you and you said, observe the thoughts, don't engage with them, the, uh, I began to do that. And in the moment, I felt some sadness and I felt some visceral movement. The first thing, it makes me feel like the structures of my ego, be they biochemical or neurological patterns, movements, habits of thought, habits of being, almost exist as a strategy to prevent me experiencing, for example, sadness or other sensations that might be regarded as unpleasant this idea that we formulate an identity that is not absolute but rather a habitual uh, recurring psychic phenomena this comes again and again too in a lot of teaching yes i would not want to put that on you to say that you formulated that in any conscious way or deliberate way Uh, we don't know how these things come in some people may have a similar kind of environment of experiencing and come out with very different um, different uh, responses, different memories, different experiences, you see. So um, what I would say is that uh, you say that, uh, for instance, as I was speaking, you were trying to do that, and then what emerged underneath, even more coming up, 
some visceral feelings, some maybe some sadness. Uh, so don't end your observing, your detached observing prematurely. Let them come up also, and let that also have a chance to, to to show itself. Let it also come. You know, um, I feel it is quite healthy because a lot of times we don't allow space for that. We either suppress it. I know you are someone. I'm sure many people love you because you you almost do that for them. You 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 express yourself and what's coming up in a very a natural way and a way that helps people to feel like, whoa, you know, Russell Brand says that, so I can do that, you know. So there is something in that that allowing those feelings to come, and uh, and and f- you can be alone or you can be other people. Good if you're alone, then you you know even your own mind functioning may try to judge that. So judgments may come up about that also, but just keep. In this kind of neutral observing, just let them come. Don't get into anything. Don't log into anything quite yet. Just allow them to come, and uh, somehow uh, stay in that neutral field. Now, something important may happen: is that if I say uh, now you're observing the more subconscious things that we we often don't look at, they may show up in our subconscious state in dreaming and so on. But now, in the waking state, uh, they are emerging. Uh, deeper layers of feelings may be coming up to the surface. But nevertheless, stay. Uh, don't subscribe to them. Just just let them play. And you can do that. But what happened now is I would uh, often say, um, try simply now to be not only aware of what's coming up on the screen, don't 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 get involved in the traffic. Let them flow. Let them flow, but sort of be aware. Seem to try see that you're aware that you are simply that there's an up perceiving of them and noticing of them. Be aware of the awareness itself, and I may say that at different stages, depending on how capable the listener is able to to actually respond to that guidance. If they are able to, then they will find that a shift takes place um, away from the from the from the noise, the traffic noise, from the from the whatever is happening in the carnival or the mind or whatever, and it's like as though the attention turns back towards where the seeing is coming from, and that is a second stage, secondary stage that happens very naturally whereby you begin to experience the environment of where the seeing is arising from. That's also a very, very natural thing, you see, and that's very different. The minute uh, you, you sense that, ah, whoa, whoa, I'm, it's possible to just be here. And, uh, and then I may ask them some question. What, what does it feel like when you're, when you're simply aware that you are aware and not just telling the story of what you are aware of, which are things that are constantly coming and going. In fact, all that feel is quite unstable. Even when we try to describe it, it's already flow, flown by, but we are retaining some impression through memory, you see. But if you simply observe without trying to control or to direct the traffic, but just stay as the awareness of it, a great... Um, uh, step uh, has been made that you are aware. You become more self-aware rather than activity aware. Become self-aware. That's very, very important stage, Russell. I would say that to you. I felt it just then. I was as I was <clears throat> paying attention to what you're saying. I felt the transition into the awareness, and I felt that that was transcendent of the initial feeling of sadness. It made me think of yesterday, how I felt when learning something about Ayurvedic diet and like not eating garlic and onions and not drinking coffee and not having stimulants. I've already in my life given up um, one day at a time chemical dependency to drugs and alcohol and sex addiction and pornography, all of these things that I one day at a time no longer engage in, but I still have this appetite for stimulation. And I suppose, in a most sort of in a culturally acceptable form in a behaviorally or behaviorally ordinary form this activity oriented consciousness is 
part of that. And I felt, when is the, when am I going to transition from a life of essentially living within the confines of a culture that is predicated on activity, action, materialism to this new phase? Uh, what about we change something a bit? Not rather than waiting in kind of like when in linear time is it going to come to the stage when this dependency on these um, these habits or whatever it is will be transcended? How about that you look more from stay on the same let's stay on the same place we are merely observing without judgment, because one thing that happens there is that personal identity comes to the front, uh, meaning the, the idea you have of who you are uh, is the basis on which those actions can act and report to and against, you see? So um, I would just say, just stay uh, uh, faithful to that, just be present in that uh, field of neutrality, if I can use this term now, you know? And because by now, if I was actually doing this, uh, which I hope we, we, we are to some extent, um, that if we are actually doing this, you would be able to, in real time with me, just confirm that, you know, actually, yes, you know, if I stay back here um, and and just be the the looking or the seeing or the, the perceiving, um, then I may ask you, in this perceiving place, the place of awareness itself, is there, are you a person here? Yes, I don't want to ask that. Are you a person here? Because the minute you touch, you know, yesterday and this, and then I see that, you know, my addictions and my habit and the need for stimulation and so on, I say, okay, 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 let's stay in the now and, and, and just look for a moment, you know, that even that would be brought up in front of that neutral seeing. It is still there, you see. All I'm trying to do uh, is to point to a dimension within yourself that is not caught in any scenario. It's not inside any box of personal description. It's actually uh, a place where the functioning of perceiving uh, is itself perceived. I don't know if we've gone too quickly to say No, that. no, no, no. I get that. I get it, man. Like that thing where you said... Um where you said that, you know, at, at this point of perception, are you a person there? And it made me recognize that these are acquired conceptual, uh, they're, they're acquisitions, they're kind of a mental property that have been gathered, a kind of personal zoo. Identified with. Uh, uh -huh. You know, uh, okay, it might seem to some people that this is a bit unfair because how can we not identify with them? We are all brought up like that, uh, you know. Where is the place to not identify with them? Well, perhaps right now is a chance to take a look and to say, yes, you come to that place of uh, 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 that space of kind of neutrality, you know, like this, where you're only the seeing. Uh, you're only the seeing, uh, where you know somehow yes, that, that that is seen. These things are seen, and even the sense, a strong sense, an intimate sense, of a mm, uh, an involved. Uh, person that I take myself with, and I can talk about that, um, is uh, is uh, you know is is really reaching for connection to the habits in order to validate that you know I'm the one who has them, is mm -hmm. also seen. You see, don't leave the seeing, and then you see that whatever it is that is emerging, is actually showing up on the screen on some kind of screen in front of you. You may say it's in the mind, or some people may say consciousness, but the fact is that you are aware of them arising, and that awareness itself uh, is not the thing you're aware of. Uh, you see, this is so radical in the most pleasing way, uh, the most open way, uh, that you are becoming aware of uh, a dimension, a layer, or you may say a dimension, uh, within your own existing self, whereby there's only a sense of awareness, of just being aware. Now, I know that sometimes the mind wants to hurriedly bring some question, yeah, but I can't live, oh, can I live like that, and so on. We'll come to that. I would rather say, taste the fruit first, 
before asking how good it's going to be and well, how much how much calories it's got and so on. just taste that because <laughs> that is already present this is not a construct it is not a place you've got to reach it's already here so i'm only pointing to a kind of a recognition that is an experiential recognition not merely an intellectual conviction but something that you can pay attention to and uh, by doing that uh, observe and be aware of the field or the the the, the environment internally uh, uh, how does that uh, feel again no imagination is required no creativity is required it's just a question of being guided to 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 look from a deeper and truer place within oneself you see because the minute you go back to the reference of yourself from the past it's already got so many tendrils hooking into so many things that it can keep on bringing up more and more and more things. Wow. Yeah, I did it just then and it definitely works. It was amazing. Um, uh, Muji, though, uh, this is some questions now. This uh, aligns a lot with a lot of the cultural post-structuralist arguments that are happening now Uh you know, what is a man, what is a woman, what is a nation, all these things dismantled, like, you know, like, I think, in a sense, it's a kind of an intellectual version of looking for a kind of freedom, a kind of a oneness, a kind of a pure truth happening at a cultural level in in one way. But when, when we talk, Muji, of this... Uh, receding into this crucible of consciousness that is observing even the most basic uh, tenets of self that, that, that be begin to seem or or become become realized as conceptual even oh yeah russell that's a concept oh yeah no it's not happening now my childhood my addiction or even yesterday and only this moment is real i can you're very good at guiding people to that space it's a, a, a wonderful how you do it um, however, the context in which most of us live is this uh, sort of a rapacious, aggressive materialism. Like the, the, our culture, our religion, our faith is in this direction. But only by habit and conditioning. I see, only by habit and conditioning. And uh, whatever we have learned is a uh, is a uh, subsequent to or secondary to to what we are. We are we are already here before learning happens. Uh, uh, something is already here that uh, you may say learning or experiences uh, happen uh, in front of that. So my point is, yes, there may appear to be so many different approaches to to breaking down the structure of thought and, and so on, but some of them, uh, they, they are doing their little thing, but they, they sometimes burn themselves out because uh, they are much too... And themselves, you use the word conceptual or, or you know, um, intellectual in some in some way. Yes. Where, whereas um, the pointing I'm talking about, it is immediate, and it is actually um, bypassing. Um, I used to say you have. To, I used to say, and I do say sometimes to some of uh, the people, some of my friends or uh, listeners or so on, that you must become like the cow that jumped over the moon. And what I meant by that is uh, the moon being the moon mind. Uh, something has to jump a bit over that. And it, it's not as perplexing or, you know, sort of mystical as that. What I simply mean is uh, to, to bypass uh, lesser victories in order to come to the quintessence of what is uh, the real. Because sometimes the mind itself can appear to be searching um, but it's only another decoy to uh, of distraction, you see, to to then develop some complex uh, theory uh, about something, which in the end it amounts to um, just throwing a stone in the bush. As you're coming closer to a discovery, is that as though the mind uh, throw a stone in the bush to to put you off the scent, so to speak. And uh, um, I, I I do see when that happens with people when we come to some elaborate uh, explanations about uh, the mind and the world and so on. I say, you're not going to reach there like that. Because I sense in that often a kind of, uh, a kind of 
an avoidance parading as a, a, a genuine sort of like search for the truth. And it may have some genuineness behind it, but there must be a, a, a willingness, an openness to bypass many of these what I'd call obstacle thinking uh, to get to the core of what it is that is acting in such a powerful way to distract the attention from the from the real the real um, discovery. You see. Do you think this deep place of perception is the same in all of us? And do you think that this is what people mean when they say God? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. It is the same in in all of us. It's the same thing. Uh, this is what's so beautiful. You know, it is not limited by religious expressions or any sort of like doctrine or so on. That's more on the surface, I would say, in a deeper, and yet at the same time, I would say closer than intimacy, is is that which simply is in ourself, rather than th- that which is continuously trying to become or to reach something. I point to the alreadiness of what is perfect within ourselves, and you quite beautifully um, equated that uh, with what you call the God Self. It is the God Center, the God Self within uh, the uh, living beings. I would, we're, we're, let's, let's call human beings for now. This is time, if this is timeless and spaceless and beyond concepts, then there is no agenda, there is no objective. And does that mean that 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 this is not that this phenomena, this uh, true self, this unified field, however we regard it, uh, is not in a discourse with the egoic self. Because sometimes I feel like when I feel like that, for example, to put it more simply, when I was taking drugs, because I'm a twelve step person, the twelve step method teaches us what you were looking for all the time you were taking drugs was this connection to God, to feel safe, to feel real, to feel part of something, to realize and actualize yourself, to be free of your ego. This is like basic twelve step stuff. So, and sometimes when I look at the, 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 the appetites that I've had, the, the, the yearning, I sometimes think, what does the wanting want? What does the wanting want? You know, I try to give the wanting sex. I give the wanting drugs. I give the wanting money, power. None of these things are enough. None of them mean, none of these things mean anything. If the wanting wants to be whole, to be connected, to be awakened, to be realized, then do you feel that this thing, this uh, God self, has an agenda and an intention wants to be realized or is it beyond that kind of simplistic attraction attachment desire yeah yeah it it, it is both (laughs) it is both and beyond actually because i would say that um you know um let me see how i can put it now um okay let's put it this way that um uh, mm, I stated before that fundamentally we are one uh, with that uh, supreme being, or you know. But in our um, in our dynamic expression, where that consciousness, which needs the body, in order to taste experiencing, uh, gets identified with the body, you know, and uh, the whole the whole world play. Supports that, not in some oh we're going to get you to that. No, no, in a natural way. It seems we we all develop um, a strong uh, a personal identity with the body, and it seems as though the consciousness, the the, the supreme self, wanted to have that uh, that. Let, let's talk like that for a moment. Like it wanted to have that experience of um, of uh, individuating in in each body, believing it is a separate autonomous self in each body uh, and in each body have its having its own unique identity and desire and temperament and uh, its own unique kind of play or journey or something like that okay um, and that uh, you know wherever it came from originally <clears throat> it's lost contact with that but uh, where it came from it, I, I would say, is not at a physical distance. It's a distance of subtlety and of knowingness, of waking up to something. Because clearly it seems to me that we were intended 
to believe for a while that we are merely personal vessels, personal beings, doing our own journey and having our own sense of a personal reality and so on. That seems fairly acceptable, and I wouldn't argue with that from an experiential point of view, as most people would present that. However, we see that we are constantly outgrowing our concepts, and that whatever we believe is not reliable. We may feel very strongly about a certain thing, but after a while, there are forces acting upon our belief and our claims that cause us to feel differently about them. So even about ourselves, uh, the idea we have of ourselves is constantly changing all the time. So what of any of that is substantially dependable and reliable? You see, it keeps changing. It's like a constantly changing self-portrait, so to speak. You know, but however changeful that becomes. There must be a place from where all this changefulness is perceived also. And it must be coming from inside. It's not something outside telling you, look, you know, I can see all your change. From within uh, uh, this vessel of uh, uh, conscious expression is that uh, capacity uh, to observe uh, the sense of one's life and so on and the changes that are that have happened or is possible in the sense of time and and change and all of these things are witnessed by something which itself seems to be much more stable than the things that we are seeing in in and through the mind you see so um i, I want to continue for a moment that um because you mentioned that is it is it be could it be that this supreme state or godhead or whatever it is is completely you know um in, uh, uncaring about our little world and our own little projections and so on. Um, it is always present, you know, even in the most um, seemingly arrogant expressions and so on. It is always there because uh, because we are, we we are consciousness. You cannot know anything or perceive anything, even the sense of yourself, were you not conscious. Consciousness is the substratum, is the ground of existence. Without consciousness, I mean, if if say some great being were to appear in front of you and saying, you know, "My dear Russell, you know, I mean, you know, I'm aware of you because I was there before this body of yours was born, and I've been with you all this time." Um, uh, uh, ask of me whatever you want, whatever you want, and I'll give you every, I'll give you the entire universe, anything you want. I can give you, in exchange for your consciousness. Good deal, of course not. It's not a good deal, because without consciousness, you cannot be able to say, well, that's a good deal or a bad deal. I mean, so this is why I'm saying that the consciousness is fundamental to life, to existence, to intelligent. Existence and even to non intelligent unintelligent existence, it is always present, but it is not the ups and downs and the you and me and the this and that the kind of constructs that we often feel so deeply stared by it it, it is not that, and that is what um in fact triggers all true searches because until we are again aware of this at an experiential level, our lives uh, very rarely feels fulfilled. It's like there's always some another thing to go and another thing to do. And I would say whatever it is that may appear to be the goal of many people's search, ultimately, I, I, this, is, this is the only answer that's going to... It's more than an answer, actually. The only discovery that is going mm. to bring inside your being the quality of peace and joy and happiness, and an, an intuitive knowing that what you are uh, essentially is uh, imperishable, and that will remove a lot of this, um, the fears and anxieties of a human human being's uh, life. Moody, what kind of relationship do you have with the man? You were the child. You were uh, the, your uh, childhood and uh, or early life, at least in Jamaica, and being in London, and the 
with a, uh, a tragic point where your life intersected with a political disruption in Brixton and the loss of your sister, God rest her soul. How, how do you relate to this life that, from what I have learned and read, it seems more identifiable as a, a an immersed life of a ordinary person to a kind of a life where you are extracted from the definitions of culture and into sort of a, a state of awakening how do you relate to that person what what of the man you are now was present then what of the man you were then is present now uh honestly um I don't dwell on any of these things. They're not significant for me now. Uh, honestly, that is like that. Um, and they're not a reference for myself. Nothing that happened historically, I can say. I may comment about it if it feels appropriate to a discussion. Somebody may ask, and if I feel touched by something, a response may come about that. But to be honest, I feel I've outgrown um, that l that way of uh, relating about myself, this is sort of historical self, the lineage of personhood or something. I, it's not. It's not deep there. It's not totally erased. I can speak about the passing of my sister or my mother or my brother and and so so. But it doesn't have the gripping quality that it it might have had years ago or something like that. And uh, to be honest, I would say that. Um, uh, I, I, we made one book called Writing on Water, um, and the reason why I'm mentioning it right now is that many things, in fact, in everyone's life, yours also, that many things happen, and they, 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 they are not stored in any place. They, they, are, they are like a writing on water. You cannot read it uh, uh, two seconds later, it's gone. Um, because uh, um, when there is within you not a strong personal self-reference as a person, then um, the consciousness doesn't waste a lot of its power in recording things on a personal basis. Um, it, you know, it becomes uh, just uh, like if you ask me about yesterday, I would have to struggle to talk about what's yesterday about. There are much more significant things at play than to recall or to have a diary about what happened yesterday, it 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 or this morning or something. Now that may uh, may concern some people because we have a lot of our way of valuing our life is to do with memory and what we preserve uh, in memory. Although I have found that memory also is quite unreliable, um, as a you know when people used to say you cannot change the past. I say, oh, you cannot change the past. You're changing the past all the time. I mean, the past was also subjectively perceived in you, and you feel differently about what you call uh, memories and so on. Uh, it's not it's not so reliable for me. Um, so without trying to dismiss uh, people's uh, sentiments about past or whatever it is, I just say that as you uh, discover more fully uh, the the deeper truth in yourself, and I'm telling you, it far outweighs and outshines our memories, good or bad, about a, a life um, which is uh, very subjectively. Is perceived and recorded. No. So it's like you see that the the activity that m defines the narrative of our lives or biography is taking place on a superficial level. All the while, the presence and awareness is here. But until this becomes the sort of a, a dominant awareness or defining awareness, uh, <clears throat> I suppose you, it's a kind of living in a, a a place that has for you now has no tenacity. But I wonder. Then I suppose it relates to my idea of: Do you think that that there is a an see? I think sometimes the reason people narrativize their pasts or mobilize their pasts is a sense that there are injustices in the world more broadly, or at least there is darkness in the world. There is deception. There is manipulation. There is domination, control. Um, and that it would seem to me that the answer to many of these problems is a kind of individual, personal, sp spiritual uh, uh, awakening. But that uh, the more people that experience that, the more likely it is for there to be social or, and indeed global change. How do you relate your own awakening and your own teaching to these more 
or ordinary domestic political struggles that happen in the world do you think that spirituality is the solution to for example uh, oppression and violence say if i can say uh, and, and, and i dare to say that um at the heart of all uh, suffering and and uh, uh, sorrows and evils in the world is um is uh, uh, ignorance of our true nature. I put it like that. Now, by saying that, I'm not saying that whoever it is, uh, from their own standpoint and their own level of uh, maturity, um, doing whatever they feel touched by in order to create positive change, as is perceived in their own inner language, that that is not of value. It sure, surely is of value. Uh, the more we are uh, not running away from the world, but uh, in a sense discovering the truth of ourself. It, it, the world changes, in fact, uh, in, in in the way that you see it, but also <clears throat> in the way that uh, you become effective as a presence in that uh, in the, in that field, what you may call the world. You know. It's not about changing what's happening in my head, and so all oh, that's really all good and and well with you. He's jumped off the bridge, so he's fine. I'm not saying like that. I'm actually saying that the opportunity of the life, some people may call it purpose. I'm going to use a milder word such as opportunity, is to discover uh, uh, the the truest um, truth of what your life means and is and it is not going to be gained merely through reading books and having a intellectual uh, conviction about something it really has to be that the food we chew must be swallowed and by that i mean we must be brought again and again if we are fortunate to have someone who can remind you when the mind raises up as forces of distractedness because it will happen and forces of uh, resistance and rebellion, because it will happen, to keep guiding uh, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever remains in you of some openness and some earnestness and urge to go beyond the limitations of personhood, that if a voice can help you to keep, you know, again, look from here again, at some point it becomes so self-evident uh, that you are not being convinced just merely mentally, but experientially, you are you are actually experiencing what it's like to simply be present as yourself, as the truth in yourself, not a truth I believe in. It's not a philosophy or, you know, something, some religious kind of fervor or something only. I mean, everything has its power and everything has its contribution, but I'm talking about a very direct experience that puts you back in touch. Um, with uh, not just the, the the singular sense of a personal self, but the universal quality that is there in the heart of every human being. You see, so I would put it that that would be, yes, we must make whatever um, you know. The consciousness is playing through all of this. It's it's impossible to to try and capture what that means. You have to only come to see it through the realization of your of what's happening inside your own self. You'll come to a, a, an understanding experientially that's much greater than the capacity to verbalize that. You know. Will you please do a, a guided experience for us, Muji? Okay. Okay. Because you at the beginning, thank you. At the beginning, you were kind of doing it naturally, and I, was, I have many, many questions to ask you. What is your practice? Are you continually trying to stay in this state of awareness as opposed to doing structured meditation? I have all of these questions, all of these inquiries, but really, I think I want to experience. I want to experience. Okay, let, let's do this, and then you can ask me those questions if they are still alive afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, let's try. Let's let's look at that, and I would invite um, your your listeners and so on to 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 participate because it's a very gentle um, uh, um, exercise, I could see, and available for 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 any and everyone. You see, mm -hmm. 
so a, a very um, simple and immediate way. Supposing that, just supposing, let's play, that nothing exists but you. Suppose nothing exists but you. I know that sounds crazy, but let's try it. Suppose there was no world and no memory of a world and so on. You know, there is only yourself. So that the attention did not have anything to go out towards and to talk about this and to talk about something from yesterday or, or some future. There is only your being. I'm 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 really having a big shot at this one because there is a slower procedure, a slower way of tackling this. But let's go straight into that. That you are only here, and uh, so your attention and everything has nothing to to keep referring to, apart from uh, being aware of just being. You're just here, just here, okay. And anything about how I was yesterday, or how I want to be next to tomorrow, or next week, or whatever, is simply some kind of myth that doesn't. All that really exists is is only here, right now. Okay. Let's suppose that uh, you could leave aside for a moment every idea you have. About who you are, just for a moment, just for just this short time we're going to spend now, as you have invited me to, just leave every description about yourself, your self-image, and so on. Just leave it outside for a minute, aside for a moment. Let's say we're not going to ask you to destroy that. No, no, no. Just leave it aside, and then when the exercise is finished, we can reclaim uh, whatever it is that you're leaving aside for the moment. But really, be earnest about it, and just say. Uh, whatever it is about myself, such as who, what I've done in my life, and I've been meditating for so many years, I've this, this. Let's just not include that in this present moment. And whatever I may want from something called a future, like how I would like to see the world and so on, let's not engage with any thoughts about that. Not no thoughts about that. And. Any desire, even for enlightenment or something, any desire at all, let's just um, leave that aside for the moment. Okay. So, the past, your lineage, your background, the person you consider yourself to be, uh, your relationships, uh, and your desires or aspirations for a world—all these things you're going to leave, leave, leave. Just be empty of them, empty, 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 and genuinely, genuinely uh, participate in this exercise. So empty, empty, empty beyond even the idea or concept of emptiness, meaning not holding on to anything at all. Let's imagine if everything that you have learned, or you believe, or think, was somehow uh, could be taken out. If everything could be taken out, and everything is taken out, there will remain here, whatever it is that this is, something that cannot be taken away. It's just here. It's not an object, nothing. Can, it cannot be removed. Take everything that you have learned, everything that you have experienced, everything that you could desire, just uh, take it out, remove, if it were taken out. So you are totally empty of any content of memory, past, present, future, desire, even for enlightenment. And you are simply here. You are aware that what I am calling you now, even your personality, the sense of personhood, your rights, your your whatever self descriptions, everything you will suspend for a while. Leave leave it aside for now. And I'm asking you to do this so that I could just ask you just a few questions which are yes or no answers. Very, very simple. If you have come so far with me, 
to leave these things aside. That which is here now, which remains, which was not, which cannot be taken away, whatever it is, I sometimes just call it the what is, or sometimes I refer to it as just the isness. May I ask you just a few questions? Whatever it is that is here now, you see, is it an object of any form at all? No. No. May I ask if everything could be left aside? Everything. This which cannot be taken out. Uh, does it have any uh, shape or form or design at all that's left here? No. No. And what about? Could it? Could you say that there could be a boundary beyond which this does not exist? You can answer this. No. Do you say no? There's not a boundary beyond which this does does not exist. Um, can this, whatever it is, um, become depressed or addicted to anything or become sick? No. No. Can can it be for or against anyone? Can it take sides with anyone at all? No. No. It's beautiful. Stay like this. Stay with me. Just as this. Just like this. Are you creating this? Have you created this, or are you imagining this at all? No. No. This which is, therefore, having asked you that previous question, can this, whatever it is, can it fade? No. No, it cannot fade. May I ask you maybe what seemed a strange question? Was it created or born? No. The next question is, can it perish or die or end? No. No. Is it a philosophy? No. Can what we call mind exist apart from or independent of this, outside of this? No. Let me ask just perhaps one more question. How close are you to it? Is it a question of some uh, centimeters, a meter, a mile? What is there any distance that separates your natural sense of being from this? No, no distance. No, no distance. So therefore, would it be unreasonable to say that if all your answers are as they have been and are, and you did not have to even think about your responses, it seems to me, then could I deduce that all these answers are about you? What you are. Yes. Yes. Uncreated. 
not merely an object, cannot be sick or depressed or become addicted to anything at all. It cannot fade. That there are no natural boundaries beyond which it ceases to exist. That it is not merely a philosophy or a belief system. That it was not born. That you did not imagine it, and that it cannot die. Is it? Could you say it's just a feeling that you're having? No, no. And then, I think I asked you after this, uh, how 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 far is it away from you? And you you say there's there's no distance. I said if all these things are so as you have responded, then what you are confirming is your own true self. And that if this conversation should continue, in whatever form, will it make a difference to this which is? Is this in waiting for something to happen? No. So that is it. That's all I wanted to share. You know that uh, that you could have this direct um, recognition, and that that is here, irrespective of what is playing within the field that we call the mind and person and so on. That you may call it a background. Could we even say it is a background, even, and not no. a foreground? It's 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 it is is it limited in any way at all? No, no. It's very good, very good. And that's simply what I endeavour to share um, uh, with with each one who is open to take a look. And as uh, rightly uh, promised, that after the exercise. Is is complete. Uh, we may go back and pick up the usual stuff that you we, we I asked you to leave outside. I mean, you know, I, I, it was not a trick. Of course, we can go back and and even if we don't go back to claim them, uh, these uh, these this play these these things these what well, characteristics or whatever they will keep coming somehow appearing in a space we call the mind will come, but can they? Push this out of the way, uh, or are there merely happenings inside the immensity of this non-happening space? Mm-hmm. And I am saying that uh, this is what uh, the mm, the Buddhas of the world, the Christ, and all the great uh, masters, or uh, not not recognized to be great, whoever have come to that recognition. That's the first stage. Thereafter, one uh, would be uh, so impacted upon by by this inner seeing that uh, it, you would want to to continue marinating your attention in in this. You see. And I'm not asking anyone to stop smoking and stop going out and having a good time. And it's got nothing to do with that. That can be if that if that's what life wants to do to play and so on. It can only be a play that arises in this uh, and uh, and ends in this or whatever happens in that. But can this itself end or be affected by the actions of the body, mind, or sense of person? You see. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. And and Russell, this is all I've been wanting to share. Uh, I say that one comes to this purest of recognition in what, in fact, I feel our soul longs for, but haven't come to recognize the importance of this recognition, and so we continue on a more shallower platform. 
of uh, uh, body mind uh, personal existence which is also an aspect or mode of consciousness but as you indicated at some point earlier in our conversation that's that's more of a superficial layer of ourself and this this awaits the recognition it's not sitting there waiting for recognition it is the unchanging uh, self that we are i mean everything else are like clouds uh, coming and going some slowly some quickly and it is fine that in the realm of changefulness change happens i mean it's healthy um, but now one sees that if whatever is experienced as being beautiful we need not try to cling to it because other beauties are coming also uh, the traffic is uh, flowing by but this place which i point to i say that is not flowing by the thank you the biases of our culture are to, if they are not an expression of this whilst they acknowledge all things take place within this these biases are likely derived from uh biological impulses for fear sex desire status sort of primal uh, animal drives this it seems is what our culture is an expression of acquisitiveness domination um i wonder then if you consider it to be significant and important to, uh, that our cultures become an expression of this in a way that um, influences the balance of these aforementioned more uh, appetite-led forces. Thank you. So I, I would not be so naive as to, as to you know, be out uh, telling people this. You must do this. You must do that. I feel that each one is ripening at their own speed, and uh, people are coming more and more into this understanding. Uh, not, I, I, I would, I would not say that this will happen at an evangelical proportion or something like that. And it's not necessary for me. I think it's a very. Uh, I don't. I don't feel the God self, which which is what we are what we are speaking to from and about, um, is impatient waiting for human beings to do something. Uh, it's already perfectly there. The layers of what we give so much importance to, what we may call our human. Uh, uh, level of uh, consciousness and behavior, superficial as they are, does wreak havoc in the world, so to speak. And uh, as someone, an intelligent being, um, would wish to um, uh, alleviate or to to transform that destructiveness into a more constructive or more a more uh, peaceful um, way of being. Of course, of course, of course. Um, uh, what I would say is that, as each one comes to this recognition in a very in their own time and n natural way, and the universe is, is somehow I would say the, the universe in some way a bit unbeknown or unrecognized to so many people, is actually coaxing us towards this. All experiences, if we are smart enough to learn from them, is ushering us back to uh, self-discovery. It's like to become ourself again, so to speak. And so what I would say about that is that um, as each one uh, uh, experiences this, the, the power of this recognition uh, that is so transformative to, first of all, your own sense or way of life, um, it will automatically bless every other aspect of your expression, and also, in some way, uh, um, enter into the orbit of other points of consciousness. You know, it does it actually, and I would say, in in if I would give an example of my own um, uh, way or life as perceived here. Um, I came into this, into this way of sharing and pointing out, um, and it seems quite a number of people are touched by that, and and their lives have changed in profound ways, um, uh, including very deep anxieties, depressions, and addictions, and fears, and 
all kinds of ways have been transformed, not by force and not by suppression, but by allowing space uh, for these energies to arise within us and to be seen increasingly from this this fresh discovered place, you know, more and more. Yes. So it's in a sense it it's not about the exertion of these practices or or access to this state it, because that is more likely to be an expression of egoic individualism to sort of say right i'm going to make sure that everybody in britain or the world get gains access to this state that's you've sort of already crossed over into the other fuel into the other strata into the sort of egoic force it would mean that you never really crossed back in the first place uh, to have such an idea because what happens is that um, the sense of the egoic drive subsides into a more universally uh, expressed um, uh, way and um, so uh, I, what I would say is what you discover and uh, is uh, you don't have to push life about uh, so much there is a there is a flow in life, what I would call the cosmic, uh, authentic flow of life, which is actually perfectly suited to each life form um, as we come into, into the greater consciousness from which all life is flowing. It is the source and the womb of all uh, of existence. As we discover this more and more, no, you find that... Uh, uh, instead of uh, pushing the river, so to speak, we, we are more somehow finding, uh, just discovering that life takes care of life. I want to say that, you know. I, I don't want to miss the chance to say that because we may feel that the previously held ambitions and the sense of nobleness and zealousness for changing the world uh, subsides now. Some people may think, "No, I don't want to. I don't want to give up my my drive to change the world." Well, um, if you are trying to change the world from a very uh, subjectively distorted perspective, I wonder how much true impact you are having uh, on, on what you call the world. I feel that as you, uh, you must. Uh, I, I, there's a saying. I'm sure you know about it, where it said it was something that had impact on myself uh, many years ago. Uh, before I came into any of this, it said, um, you know, that uh, you must become the, ch the, the, the change you wish to see in the world. Or another one that says, I am not uh, um, seeing the world as it really is. I'm seeing the world as I am. And uh, it's through my own lens of uh, sometimes distorted perception and, and uh, uh, subjectivity that I'm perceiving a world which is only inside my head. Uh, from for most of us, our world is inside our head. The way that we perceive um, what we call the world is uh, something that is not stable. It's it's uh, it's it's influenced by so many different moods and the, the time of the year and some untraceable factors contribute to how we're feeling in each moment. And we are somehow presenting this as though they are facts. You see. Where for me, I see that they're fiction, and this is why I said earlier that I don't give so much importance to that. Yes. There's a reality that's much more profound, and that from this uh, deeper disco discovery, uh, as I, I hope we have engaged in that and others can uh, experience also, one finds that uh, the kind of hastiness that we, uh, we come to in life um, is not uh, necessary. You see, it's somehow something drops back inside uh, a more a quieter flow, which can be quite dynamic when it wants to be, but it's not driven by any human agent. It, it's it's just the the natural life I would call, and uh, it's not something to preach about. It's not to go and say, "Hey, listen, guys, you have to start living naturally." I don't uh, <laughs> feel like that, you know. Uh, 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 so. At least I'm freed from that burden <laughs> of feeling that we must preach about this or something. My friend came to, I guess you did an event either at Brixton Academy or a fridge or somewhere, some Brixton place, and he described 
He's a, this guy as well. He's a very spiritual man, actually, but his background is not a spiritual background. You know, he's, you know, like, but he's talked about, he said that, he goes, oh, mate, that, I win that Muji thing, man. And like a, a blue light come through my consciousness and everything was one. And I see a oneness and then I start to think, hold on a minute. I like, he goes, he goes, enough don't matter when my kids die. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Everything is one. And then he goes, I thought, I want to, it does matter when my kids die. It does matter. Like he goes, I don't want to go in that blue light. He goes, like had an argument with <laughs> a experience of enlightenment. It's, but it's a remain for us, a point of reference of the possibility of transcendence, the, the liberty of transcendence the beauty of this state and i'm very grateful to you because i've experienced it many times when listening to your uh, youtube channel and I, i'm familiar with and uh, a student to a degree of your work and uh, but it's very beautiful to experience it in such a direct and intimate way as, as uh, i have experienced if, today. if, if i could say something yes, i sir. mean it, it is true that um, people uh, do have uh, um, uh, certain experiences through satsang, through these kind of talks that we have, and uh, depending upon their temperament and so on, um, I, I often say, you know, just keep quiet uh, within yourself and uh, don't make any um, premature conclusions about anything you're experiencing for the moment because all that is also traffic for now. Mm. Um, so people do sometimes... Uh, feel like some sense of explosion with inside themselves. That's not my goal or aim. Um, you know, sometimes you may experience like the the vanishing or the depressurization of the mental stuff, and that c can create a tremendous, uh, you know, blast of just pure joy or something for a while. And some people go out and say this happened and this happened and so on. I am not going for these kind of you know grenade moments of so on. But more that 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 very quiet and steady, very much as I have endeavoured to guide um, and respond to your um, your request to 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 um, do a, um, a guidance online with you, um, that uh, we must continue to somehow marinate the attention because what tends to happen is that as soon as a profound experience uh, occurs within us of of a beautiful kind a very glorious kind uh sometimes a strong sometimes i say a storm is coming because it is as though it triggers all this all the heavy stuff to come flooding to the surface and then people go oh no no, no i can't handle this man oh no no sorry sorry i can't i can't can't do this so um i i i'm very happy always to to, to just to make people aware of that, that that is a very uh, normal reaction, uh, and and uh, not to not to somehow um, take that to be the outcome of uh, of uh, your initial seeing, um, because it may come stuff that you, we have consciously or subconsciously suppressed start to come to the surface, and it may act as though. The mind is trying to sabotage your opportunity for freedom. So this is really uh, an earthquake that many people feel, oh, this is too much I can't handle, and when authentic, when an authentic experience of truth uh, first, the impact of that. So for many, and I'm happy to say, there are large numbers of people who go through that um, initial you know, uh, quaking, but they persist, and I say, just keep marinating in this, marinating your attention in this. Stay with this, rather than to be talking about it and reading about it. Better just sort of keep looking from this place of emptiness, and see that whatever traffic appears in the in the mind space is just that. It's just appearing and disappearing. Everything comes and goes. There's never been anything that's come and stayed. Everything is coming and going, and the noticing of this is fundamental to, to what I'd call really being liberated, and liberated means to be liberated from the, the hypnosis of psychological conditioning, mm -hmm. and 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 from the strength of egoic identity. You know, that's the real uh, freedom, and it need not be, you know, some evangelical outburst or going to change the world. Uh, it may come in, in, in differing ways. Some beings just become very quiet. 
Others become much more creative. There's such a wide uh, field of uh, expression arising as an outcome of authentic seeing. And it's not like it's a bang on the head and it's finished. Uh, we continue somehow maturing and refining in this discovery. Uh, and at the same time, all this is seem- seemingly going on against a background of unchanging awareness. It's a kind of paradox, but you really experience that when you, when you, when you uh, uh, genuinely take it on, you know? What happened? One, one, that's one more thing, because you say your friend was saying like nothing, nothing matters, nothing exists, that <laughs> family and so on, and you freaked out at that because I know you, you're very much a family man, and 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 how how much uh, I've I've seen and ex- heard your expression, uh, uh, a kind of loyalty and love that you have for your family, quite rightly so. It is not that we just feel oh I don't care about. It. Some people do express that, I don't care about this, I don't care about that. But uh, if we follow them, we find that gradually their mind properly integrates into the heart, and they do see that uh, what they really meant is that I don't only care about my family. I, the world becomes my family. Yeah, I think that's much more an authentic thing. Uh, you will care, but the level of uh, attachment and fear that often accompanies um, our our love for our loved ones and so on, uh, gets distorted by the, all the stuff that goes on inside our minds that's not been cleared up as yet, you know. So, uh, thank you, Muji. Muji, thank you so much for uh, spending this time with me and for this uh, personal teaching. I know that you are very busy, and I'm very, very grateful to you for this uh, direct, focused, clear. Uh, passionate and yet relaxed uh, experience. Thank you. Well, it's been. I have to say that it's been. Uh, you you allowed that. You know. You 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 gave the space for that. I'm very grateful for that because, you know, I I don't expect anything. You know, I just discover as we go, and I would just like to um, say thank you and to bless your work because I know that. With all the the jokiness and the fun and so on, people love that about you. But I see that there is really a deep level of um, care and compassion flow that flows from you. That's why I wanted to. I was happy to 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 meet you like this, and I I, I just blessed that you you, you reach uh, uh, more and more people in this authentic way because uh, people always need uh, each other at least to show a way that is possible to release ourselves from. So many things that we have buried, and feel like you know nobody wants to see this, or this is too ugly to be seen. And I feel that uh, people like yourselves and so on um, uh, give a space for 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 people to feel like it is okay to to that uh, these things have happened to me, and I'm not the only one that they've happened to, and like that you know. And that, to be honest, if I can just share that. Um, uh, if people could look into the lives and the background of many awakened beings, they went through exactly similar things of turmoil and uh, even sometimes to the point of suicide and things like that. Before they somehow they needed that friction or that tension in order to somehow break through or break out of of, of that, you know. So uh, the, the people need not be so scared or judge themselves to. Too much. There isn't anyone who is coming to this world who who is exempt from this, and uh, and if you were exempt, I would tell you it would not be such a great life. Because <laughs> life is really for transcending and for growing and for 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 sharing and empathizing, and the consciousness allows all this play to take place, because at heart, uh, and that is the most important thing, uh, what you are fundamentally. Is uh, perfect, in fact, and that's not a compliment to people. It's just a reminding that we don't need to be so hard on ourselves. Don't believe your mind. Um, uh, you know, uh, we have got a, a very strong and unhealthy relationship with our minds in a psychological sense, and uh, we don't often get enough um, good uh, examples. Although there are many, many good and great people in the world. Sometimes we feel, if we listen to the news and so on, we may feel that you know, wow, you know, my, you've got very little uh, good role models uh, for this type of discovery in life. So, huh. 
I want to just myself thank you. So. Muji, thank you. Thank you. That was really cool. <laughs> I want to come there. I want to come to your ashram. I, I was trying to organize it, and I will organize it with your permission. I, I would love to come. Yes, yes. Actually, since then, you know, I've, uh, we, because it's, we call it an ashram for so long because, you know, so much of my spiritual um, experiences have uh, come through the many years I've traveled to India, sharing like this as well, too. A bit strange that uh, uh, for, for many people that a Jamaican man is giving satsangs to Indians and so on, and many Indians are coming. But uh, the point is here that um, uh, we felt to 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 give it uh, a more appropriate name uh, to what we're doing now and it's just called the center for self realization mantisaja a center for self realization rather than an ashram because an ashram comes with with so much you know particularities and so on sure the, um uh, our teachings is very very universal it doesn't exclude anyone yes open to everybody and uh, like that so it's not that we want to have more and more people come. It's just that it's more of a true reflection of what happens here. It, we, if you come here, it very much feels like an ashram. It's a very loving place, very free, very... I, I, in fact, uh, uh, I, I, I would like to re-extend the invitation to you to come because I know one time you had talked about coming, uh, but it, it just didn't happen at that time. So, you know, yeah, I feel it would be very good for you to come and take your family with you and spend a few days with us. Yes. I think so too. M Muji, thank you. Love you. I love you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Under the Skin with Muji. Let me know your thought of it on Instagram. Sorry, Bear, I dropped a piece of paper on my dog there. Tag me at Russell Brand. Tweet me at Arrested Rockets. Hashtag Under the Skin. Sign up to my mailing list at russellbrand.com. Gain exclusive mailing list only news and video content. And also soon, a live show which you will like. I'll be back next week. Why don't you listen to some other episodes if you enjoyed this with Muji, as well as checking out Muji's own website, muji.org. Why not listen to some other episodes? Eckhart Tolle, Byron Katie, Sharon Salzberg. Do you not want to be a living embodiment of God, the great oneness? We already are, it seems, but let's live in that truth. Keep checking out my YouTube channel. Thanks for listening to Under the Skin from Luminary. Peace.